Good morning, this is Raymond Neutra, the president of the Neutra Institute for Survival Through Design. And we're happy this morning to have Dr. Barbara Lamprecht reprise the presentation that she gave to the Cultural Heritage Commission of Los Angeles, which voted the other day uh, to designate uh, the Richard M. Dion Neutra reunion house and apartment as a historic cultural monument in the city of Los Angeles. The uh, explanation of this justification was interesting enough that we thought we should post it on our website. Uh, Barbara, please reprise your presentation. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Barbara Lamprecht, and I'm here to present, um, as we did on January 21st, 2021, the Dion Neutra Reunion House on behalf of the Neutra Institute for Survival Through Design and the Neutra Trust. The property comprises a one and a half story combination of a main house, which you see here completed in 1951, and an attached apartment added in 1968. The complex is set atop a hill rising from the Silver Lake Reservoir on a narrow, now heavily wooded lot at the corner of Earl Street and Neutra Place, which became Neutra Place in 1992. The property, circled, is the heart and center of the famous Silver Lake colony of 10 homes and apartments designed by Richard Neutra between 1939 and 1968. You can see that's the reunion house there. The design exemplifies the breaking of the box into an asymmetric composition of line and plane with white painted panels of stucco, copious walls and banks of glass fronting a reflecting pool, sections of redwood board and batten, and characteristic Neutra spider legs, beams that extend beyond the building footprint and terminate in a post. The west facing 2000 square foot house occupies the northern end of the lot and on the south, a small 500 square foot apartment surmounts the garage that is dug into the hillside. And you can just see the outline of the original garage there in 1951. To review the main points of why the property received designation for its architecture are first, the house and apartment embodies Neutra's goal to design flexible settings for multi-generation households, a way of living with ever more relevance today. Second, the house is an excellent example of Neutra's mastery in expanding space through a generous use of trademark spider legs that also anchor the house to the, the little house to the hilly tight site. The design includes all the typical character defining features associated with the Neutra practice. Third, independently of one another, both Richard and his architect son, Dion, made minor alterations to the house throughout decades, a, a unique circumstance in the Neutra canon. The Richard Neutras lived there for two years after the famous 1963 fire that destroyed VDL Research House One, and Neutra often worked on drawings there in the reunion house. Here you see the floor plan in 1951. The layout is unchanged today. Um, we, the house basically faces Argent Place and beyond that, about 600 feet um, west of that is the Silver Lake Reservoir. Um, I've altered the drawing a little bit to make a couple of points here. Um, why does a reunion between or among grandparents, children, and grand, grandparents, children, and grandchildren work in a relatively modest sized house? Well, you can see for one thing, the parents' bedroom is separated from the children and guest wing. Um, spa it's spatially and acoustically separated. And number two, another design, an interesting design strategy is to create um, kind of a public-private integration of the bathroom, circled in red. And here it accommodates at least 
four people at one time. There's a separate um, place for toilet, um, bathtub and shower, and then two sinks. And the bathroom also has two entrances. So there's different ways to manipulate space, close off space um, to make it more um, flexible to accommodate all these various individuals. Um, this is Arthur Johnson with Richard Neutra in the freshly completed Neutra, the, the reunion house. There you can see the beautiful Roman brick fireplace beyond um, in the top left image, um, the beautiful board and batch and ceiling, um, the entrance off to the left on the top right, you see um, that Richard and Arthur are looking at plans and you can see the board and batten more clearly how it extends in to become the exterior overhang and the exterior illumination. Um, and then the, the center lower picture uh, shows the two men right in front of the kitchen. In fact, you can see the, the new kitchen shelves that are still there uh, right between Richard and Arthur, right between their heads there. So I'd like to show you some images of the original condition in 1951. Um, and importantly, um, per preservation standards, uh, spatial relationships and, and all major character defining features, interior and exterior, are unchanged. And this is important when we come to evaluate the integrity of a project, especially a property evaluated under um, criterion three, which is architecture. Here's the living room. Um, the camera is looking northeast. Um, and then this is, is taken a, a, about 1964. So you can see this wonderful indoor outdoor quality and the clear stories in the back. The front entrance is kind of beyond that bushy hedge on the left. And here's the opposite direction, also taken from the living room. The camera's looking southwest, also in 1964. And you can see the original um, curtain uh, that separated the kitchen and breakfast area from the living room. But you can also see the, the garage uh, well beyond um, the house in the background. Here's a kind of a straight on view. The camera's facing north of the living room. And here now the reflecting pool is on the left. And of course, you can't have a, a Neutra interior, especially one done by Richard and Dion without a camel table and um, what's called the Tremaine chair on the right. Here's um, a wonderful image of Richard Neutra in working in the master bedroom um, and that the camera is again facing uh, north. This is an unusual photograph. This is taken by someone unknown to us, uh, Donald J. Higgins. And this shows um, the original layout. You can see that there's a breakfast nook that separates the kitchen from the living area and um, the, the very fine rotary cut plywood, which is very difficult to get to today, even though a very humble material, uh, the formica tops and the, um, the, the classic Neutra brown color of the breakfast nook. And there are those same breakfast shelves that you saw between Arthur and Richard in that earlier photograph. So let's move on to contemporary photos. And here we have the living room. The camera again is facing north and you can see that the fireplace has um, had some life over the last 70 years, um, but everything else is um, unchanged. Now here on the right is that photograph that I showed you before of the, the kitchen area taken by Don Higgins. And on the left, um, a photo by Michael Locke showing that basically the layout is unchanged. Um, Dion added uh, a Formica countertop so that he could 
be drawing uh, while he was um, expecting dinner. Um, but essentially nothing has, no, no spatial relationships have been altered. Here we see the, uh, the entrance to the Dia Neutra Reunion House from the corner of Earl Street and Neutra Place. And as you can see, it's a very, it's a zigzag um, path of travel up to the, the front door. And this is a very typical Neutra strategy. It slows the body down in space and, and uh, offers a kind of physical transition area between your public persona and your domestic persona. This is um, two different photographs of the reflecting pool. And now you might notice on the left, um, the garage appears to be much taller. And that is because the apartment was built there, constructed in 1968. On the right, um, the camera facing north again, and you can see another characteristic um, Neutra feature, which is the angled um, two by sixes that um, pr provide some privacy between someone on the other side accessing the front door and the reflecting pool and the private area for the family beyond. I'd like to discuss now some alterations of the house. Who was responsible for what and when? Richard Neutra um, did the reflecting pool that we saw and the shelves and the mirror in the living room for books. Dion Neutra uh, is responsible for the removal of that European style curtain that was um, used by Richard and Mrs. Neutra Dioni that separated the breakfast area from the living area. Dion added two cantilevered countertops, which we which we just saw, one's for Dion's drafting to the breakfast nook. Uh, and then he added a couple of mirrors to the breakfast nook to elongate space in good Neutra fashion. And then to upgrade um, other parts of the house for um, new children were a built-in bed, closet, and storage in the child's bedroom, built-in storage and desk unit added to the guest bedroom, built-in cabinetry desk unit added in the northwest corner of the master bedroom, and a lightweight corrugated plastic and wood frame closet in the rear of the building to accommodate um, Mrs. Lynn Smart Neutra's um, formidable um, array of fabulous clothing. Here is the reflecting pool that was added by Richard in 1964. And here is the apartment as Neutra designed it, and Richard Neutra designed it in 1951. You'll notice several things. Um, I've included what you would where the staircase on the top left. Um, the staircase would be in front of the garage. In fact, I've got a 1951 sight line to the unexecuted location of the staircase. And that staircase went up to, if you look at the drawing on the right, you see that there's this, there's the staircase uh, facing the living room and the hall and a bath and two bedrooms. You don't see um, what we, we, you might find in a typical apartment, a kitchen. Um, you find just two bedrooms and a um, bath and hall. So this is clearly intended to be overflow. Um, there was many different ways that Neutra was creating opportunities or what we call affordances for overflow guests and overflow family. And so they wouldn't mind, the family wouldn't mind if um, people saw each other running up and down that staircase. In fact, it might be good to have a, a few eyes on that. But as executed, things are changed. Um, you can see now I've, I've put in um, an arrow where the new location of the staircase is because the new use and function of, of this little addition is to be an apartment for rent. And so you didn't necessarily want that same kind of visual 
interaction between family and um, the, the apartment dwellers. So the staircase is now in the back and you in fact do have a small kitchen, a bedroom, and now we have what was labeled back in the day a playroom, but is now a living room with a, with a beautiful deck looking west. In historic preservation, we also like to talk about um, additions which in a perfect world um, are built in such a way that they are what we call compatible but differentiated in terms of detailing. So it's everyone knows it's not a direct copy of an original. And here you see probably um, a wonderful uh, example of that uh, Secretary of the Interior Standard Number 9 um, compatible but differentiated. Um, the railings um, and detailing are a little bit, they're from the Neutra practice obviously, but Dion is doing things a little bit differently, but it's still compatible with the overall resource. On the left is the, the deck that I just discussed, and on the right, um, that is the south elevation of the, the apartment. And you will notice that there's fractal, what we call fractal, a type of industrial glass that Neutra often used in many, many buildings. On the lower part of the window on that top right um, photograph, that prevented people from seeing inside, um, passers-by on the street, looking up. Um, their um, vision, their line of sight was obscured, occluded. This is the interior of the apartment. Um, here is that fractal glass, um, horizontally oriented. Again, on behalf of the privacy privacy of the apartment inhabitants and this beautiful deck and, and the um, board and batten wood that's also used in a slightly different manner. It's a very small but very expansive feeling space. Well, that concludes my um, presentation. Here, of course, are the, uh, the duo, Dion and Richard, and, and thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much, Barbara. Uh, I made an additional comment to the uh, commission pointing out that not only was this multi-generational, but also accommodated uh, aging so that my brother Dion, uh, was in a hospital bed in that living room uh, towards the end of his life. And uh, the layout made it possible for children to come and stay and visit and uh, at the end of his life. And this again is something that with the aging population we're paying a lot of attention to. So thank you so much. And um, You're welcome. I will end this recording here.